They were so moved by the story that they wanted to name the baby and give him a proper funeral. Now their hope is that someone somewhere has that missing piece to the puzzle that they've so desperately searched for for almost two decades. I'm told that officials from the city are on their way now to shut it down because a Kanawha County Circuit judge just within the last half hour has granted that preliminary injunction. It's that same fear coupled with the pain Lorena's mother says she still can't grasp that she asked to not show her face or use her name for this story. Is there any way to describe what your life has been like the last three years? Look at you. Cold blooded murderers, killers. That's what they are. At the time of Lorena's murder, he was wanted for malicious wounding. Do you know why anyone would have wanted to kill her? I mean, there's an assumption. In newsrooms across West Virginia, great care is taken and must be taken to never identify victims of sex crimes, even when that information is public record, in public documents, and presented in open court. Here at Eyewitness News, a survivor of one of these heinous crimes is only identified when they agree to identify themselves and allow us to share their story. Where a woman was shot in the shoulder, they were still looking for a suspect wanted for malicious wounding in connection with that shooting. Now this all comes in the midst of Charleston investigating their 12th homicide of the year. In a rather stunning turn, Joshua Phillips told the court he would not be testifying in his own defense. Many people expected he would testify more to his self-defense claim. It was June 4th here at the Spiros parking lot at the corner of Kanaw Boulevard and Hill Street when a shootout left a man dead. Then two weeks later, another shooting. A woman seen in exclusive video we're about to show you firing random shots. Now neighbors here say enough is enough. They're sick of the noise, the violence, and they're calling on nearby bars, the city of Charleston, and the owners of this parking lot to put a stop to it. It's two o'clock on a Saturday morning. Neighbors at 816 Canal Boulevard East are awakened by gunfire in the parking lot next to their building. The victim in this case beaten and left for dead. She was in a coma for two years. Her name is Wanda Palmer and just a few days ago she woke up and was able to tell deputies who she said tried to kill her, her own brother. As rare as it gets, those are the words from Jackson County Sheriff Ross Mellinger talking about a case he said he was sure would end up in a murder investigation two years ago. I wouldn't have wagered a nickel for her life that morning she was in that bad of shape and, and quite honestly you know she was unconscious and and quite honestly you know, circling the drain medically um, massive massive amounts of head trauma um, you know consistent with you know, some sort of a, a machete or a hatchet type injury neighbors finding Wanda Palmer slumped over her living room couch and covered in blood inside her home on Flatwoods Road in Cottageville on June 10th 2020 she's been hospitalized and in a coma since then unable to tell investigators who wanted her dead and why we've been all over the state trying to eliminate uh, suspects develop leads execute search warrants I mean this isn't necessarily been a stale case for two years but without any real credible information uh, leading up to this, you know, we had some, some persons of interest, but, you know, it takes time sometimes just to eliminate others in order to narrow it down. That's kind of where we were at. Mellinger said Wanda and her brother, 55-year-old Daniel Palmer, had a violent history, but without the evidence they needed for an arrest, he remained just a suspect until the call came just days ago from Wanda's nursing home that she was awake and able to utter single words. A deputy drove to New Martinsville three days ago to talk to her. When asked to hurt her, she said it was Daniel. For her to be able to wake up and say, you know, give the name, thank God. That's all I can say, thank God, because she definitely deserves justice, definitely. Missy Powers knows Wanda and Daniel, saying Daniel had a violent side and she always felt he had something to do with his sister's attack. The only thing I can say is he's not a good person. He was not a good person, and I knew, just listening to other people talk, that he had been mean to Wanda in the past. It took hours once he was in custody Friday morning to get him to cooperate enough to be arraigned. A magistrate coming to the sheriff's office to do the arraignment because he was so combative. Deputies forced to take a different approach to get him into a cruiser into the jail. Can you get
Deputy said Wanda was coherent during her brief interview, even asking for prayer. Herschel Woodrow Williams, the youngest of 11 children, was born and raised on a dairy farm in Quietdale, West Virginia in 1923. At 20 years old, Woody, as he came to be called, joined the Marine Corps, serving in the Battle of Iwo Jima with the 21st Marines, 3rd Division. 3rd Marine Division was a reserve division to the 4th and 5th Marine Divisions, and they, on the way up there, they told us we'd probably never even get off ship because they didn't think they would ever need more than 40,000 Marines. So take a little island that's only two and a half miles wide, five miles long, you'd need 40,000 people in the middle. And they told us we'd probably uh, be gone about five days. They didn't expect the campaign to last 38 days. During the Battle of Iwo Jima, Corporal Williams volunteered to assist tanks that were attempting to open a lane for the infantry. Covered by only four riflemen, he went forward alone to attempt to eliminate the devastating machine gun fire. Using demolition charges and flamethrowers, he wiped out one position after another. He fought desperately for four hours under enemy fire. I uh, eliminated seven of those pillboxes and uh, with help of other Marines. Uh, I had four Marines who were giving me protection while I was trying to get to the pillboxes with a flamethrower which weighed 70 pounds. On your back you crawl rather than walk and uh, they were to shoot at the pillbox that I was trying to get to with the flame. And uh, in eliminating those seven pillboxes uh, or the enemy inside, then we were able to break through. And once we got behind them, then we had all the advantage. His actions, commitment to his fellow service members, and heroism recognized on October 5th, 1945, when he received the Congressional Medal of Honor from President Harry Truman at the White House. I have said ever since I realized the importance and the significance of this medal, which I didn't know on the day of the presentation, I had no idea. But I have said, when I finally realized how this affected my life and how it came about and why I have it, I have said, I'm just a caretaker of it. I wear it in their honor, not mine. Following the war, Woody worked for the Department of Veterans Affairs for 33 years, allowing him to continue serving veterans and their families. In 2016, Secretary of the Navy Ray Mavis officially announced a new ship to the country's fleet, the USS Herschel Woody Williams. I am in awe, in absolute awe of anybody who landed on those beaches, who fought across that black sand with Mount Suribachi and gun emplacements raining fire down on them, who fought for 35 days, who fought at the cost of more than 20,000 Marines killed and wounded. In March 2020 in Norfolk, Virginia, the USS Herschel Woody Williams was commissioned bearing his name. The honor is yours. In 2018, Williams stood on the 50-yard line and tossed Captain the coin before Ross. Super Bowl 52 as millions watched. Yes, sir. The West Virginia legislature included Williams in the West Virginia Hall of Fame, naming him a distinguished West Virginian in 1980 and in 2013. In 2018, the Huntington VA Medical Center was renamed in his honor. It was there he spent his final hours. Woody Williams passed away surrounded by family early Wednesday morning. He was 98. Asked often what it was like to be the last living Medal of Honor recipient from World War II, he said he never had a textbook answer. The only answer I try to come up with is that it is a life-changing experience. The day you receive this medal, your life takes a different meaning, takes on a different meaning. You now represent somebody else besides yourself. You no longer are representing just you. You are now representing a great number of people who have sacrificed their life or lives just so 
this matter would exist. In Charleston, Leslie Rubin, Eyewitness News.